Hello students, I'm Professor Benavides. Let's go over Appendix A. It's called Installation and Troubleshooting. And um, it's what you're going to refer to if you had problems installing your Python and editor, as was described in Chapter 1. Now, if you're on Windows, chances are the number one reason you went wrong was because you forgot to put a little check mark on the add Python to path. So how do you fix that? There's a complicated way of fixing it. I'm gonna go over some of that, but the easy way and the punchline here is uninstall it and reinstall it and make sure you put the little check marks. Let me show you, I put this, I took a screenshot of what I experienced. Make sure you put these little two check marks on here. Do the Mac and Linux people have to do this? No, they have other ways that their installations may not go right. Let's zero in on Windows and then I'll talk a little bit about the Mac and a bit, little bit about Linux. First stop, Windows. You go to python.org and you just let it detect your system and download the default. For example, you just click on this little link, you come over here, you go to downloads, and just let it detect the default. When you click on this link here, it'll start coming down and you can go ahead and uh, click on it and you can go ahead and start the installation process. Okay, I've already got it on my system so I won't be installing it. Make sure you put it, the check marks that I, I, I spoke about if you're on Windows. All right, now when you install it, it comes with idle. It's an editor. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. But let's say that you forgot the, the little check marks on here. I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and, and fix that. Now, how do you know you forgot? Well, if you go to the, uh, the uh, a terminal window, let's say that you go to a terminal window and you type in a simple command like Python and you don't get, uh, you get an error. In other words, Python does not start. What do you think happened? So chances are, your author says, most likely you forgot to select the add Python to path option when you ran install it. So really the easiest thing for you to do is uninstall and reinstall and do it the right way. But let's say you were an advanced user. Okay, if you're an advanced user, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you may wanna do. Another thing that advanced users do is when they install Python, they don't accept the default place for it. Usually it's gonna be in programs or programs, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, so that all the programs are together. Uh, they, a lot of advanced users like to install Python off the root directory of the C drive and give it a name. Why? Because they may be downloading different versions of Python and using different ones for different purposes. For this class, you only need one, you only need the latest, right? Or the, I believe uh, uh, 3.7 or above is uh, what the author of your book recommends. Okay, so if, you, if, you're if you're going to the command line, for example, if you're doing this, CMD, and you go ahead and type in Python, and you don't get that, you get an error message, this is what you're gonna uh, uh, wanna do if you're an advanced user. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna find out where python.exe is. Where is that file on your system? So you're, and you're gonna, why? Because you're gonna to have to copy that path and you're gonna to have to, uh, once you have that path, then you can navigate to it. Guess what? You can navigate to it using a terminal window. It doesn't tell you how, but uh, uh, he does that here. And when you type in python dot space dash dash ver, then you'll be able to issue your Python commands here. But this is kind of like a hassle that you would have to then navigate all the way over here just to type in Python. In other words, why does it work here versus before? Because be, um, it didn't work before because you didn't have the path specified in the system. Okay, when you're in that folder, it finds it okay. All right. So well, we, uh, uh, once you find out where the Python interpreter resides, that is the file.python.exe, you're going to go ahead and then add that to your path variable with a copy and a paste. Now, he doesn't tell you how to copy it. He says paste it. Well, you know, if you're a beginner, how do you know how to copy it? Um, it's not, and there's about four different ways. There's always four different ways of doing everything in, in any operating system, especially Windows. 
But the easiest thing for you to do, guys, is if, if it's not working, just uninstall it and reinstall it, okay? So um, let me go ahead and uh, uh, simulate this. He says, he says that you should go ahead and start um, you know, the Windows Explorer, click on your C drive, and then go to the search box and type in Python. I think I lowered my search by typing in python.exe. Or I, my, I lowered my search results uh, by doing that more selectively. So what we want to do is look for that file, and then we're going to right mouse click on it, go to properties, and then we're going to look at the location. Once we got that location, then we're going to then be able to then navigate to that location at the command line, or if you want to use you know, PowerShell, which you probably should be using PowerShell rather than the command line, it's a more powerful um, way of interacting you know, with your system. So um, you, you may want to go ahead and do that. Of course, I'm not going to be able to simulate the error because I already have it on correctly on my computer. But we're assuming here that I, that I have gone to the command line and I typed in Python and I got an error. So now what? And he says, well, chances are you didn't put in the path right. So what we're asked to do is we're trying to find the python.exe file. I'm going to go ahead and right mouse click on that, go to properties like he said, and then from here in the location, you'll notice the location. Now what I'm going to do here is just click right in there, hold down my, my um, shift key, and I'll notice the, the path to this. So I'm going to do a control C, you know, um, and I've got it. And I'm going to go ahead and then copy that into my path in just a minute. But let me show you how we can navigate to this location. Um, I'm going to go to uh, CD, uh, CMD. And then I'm going to go ahead and then just navigate to this path. Of course, we're pretending that I'm not able to, to uh, get to there. So presentations is the name of my account on this machine. So now I'm going to say CD app data, and it doesn't have to be cap. Uh, it's not con Windows is not context sensitive like uh, Unix. And then here I'm going to do CD. So change directories to what's the next one on here? Um, local. And then CD because well, I when I installed it, I just accepted the defaults. Um, you know, and you, when, uh, when you're doing the installation, you're offered um, the extra step of designating where you want the application to be installed. Okay, uh, I did not do that. I just accepted whatever it wanted to do. So now I'm going to programs, and then right. So in here, if I type, I'm pretending that that now I'm in that folder. If I type in Python. Of course, it's going to work, right? Uh, it, it, it's able to find the Python interpreter and it's able to see, um, you know, the, uh, the version. Of course, you can also just uh, start Python from the start menu and then type in Python, which is the easier way to, to do things. But once I've got that copied, then he says, uh, go into system information. That's not the one I want. Let's try that again. Yeah, let's go to system. That's the one I want. So from here, you're going to go ahead and go to advanced system settings. Put in your password. And from here, then, you're going to go into environment variables. And then from here, you're going to go to path. Yeah, he explains all sort of all that in, in, the, in the chapter. This is the path. We're going to go ahead and go to edit. And we're going to go ahead and add a new one and add in the new path. Is that just like too much trouble? I remember, like I said, I remember doing stuff like this back in the good, like 10, 20 years ago when, yeah, 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, like when I was doing Java, back then when Java first came out, we had to do a lot of stuff at the command line. And I just, we were just using like a simple text editor. Uh, you know, like Notepad to write Java files uh, at the uh, at the command line. So yeah, you had to uh, go ahead and 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 uh, 
you have to uh, modify the environment path. Um, what I would recommend that you do instead of doing this is to simply uninstall it and reinstall it. Okay. You know, so what I just showed you was how to add the path variable, but he started off by going to the control panel system, security system, advanced, you end up in the same place, but, um, uh, there's different ways to uh, uh, uninstall your program. I would go to uh, start, go to system, and then from here you would go to, what is it, apps? And then from here, you can look for Python or do a search, right? And go ahead and, and uninstall it, right? Uninstall. Right? And I, you saw the launcher too, you can go ahead and get rid of that too. Uh, and then go ahead and add it, the right, add it again, and this time, make sure that you uh, put the little check mark on add path to Python option. He covered this in chapter one, but a lot of students forget that. Now this is like, this is the number one way that you can go wrong on Windows. Uh, Mac people and Linux people don't have that problem, but they got their own little problems, um, you know, uh, as well, like configuring Sublime and stuff like that. So uh, the, the steps are pretty much the same on, on the Mac OS. You just go to, to python.org. Some people like to use something called Homebrew, which is just a way of, of uh, assisting with the installation and uninstallation on, on of applications. Um, so uh, basically the idea here is how do you install Python on a Mac? Number one, you can just go online and install it, or you can use Homebrew. Homebrew, again, is for, I'm not going to say it's for advanced users, but if you're like new to the Mac, you've never heard of it, just forget about it. <laughs> you know, so, but if you want to venture uh, in, into this, you can go ahead and, and install Homebrew and then install Python through Homebrew. Linux, um, Linux uh, is um, uh, also uh, capable of being installed uh, from uh, the uh, web. Uh, as well as from the terminal window. So advanced users uh, typically find their way into Linux. Both Linux and the Mac evolved from Unix, so they have very similar um, uh, qualities. So uh, uh, let's, let's go ahead and, and um, finish this off with some ideas that I don't know why are in here. Python keywords and built-in functions, but I think it's an important topic very important topic because it was about installation and you know installation and troubleshooting maybe it's because uh, it's from a troubleshooting point of view because look at this python comes with its own keywords and built-in functions so the idea here is if the, these keywords you can't use for variable names so i guess that falls under this chapter of troubleshooting in that if you want to use one of these keywords that mean something special to the Python language as a variable name, you're going to get an error. And the Python built-in functions, like the one we just learned in the beginning of the book, was the print function. He says you won't get an error, but I just did it and I got one. But it didn't work. It did get overwritten. And let me just go ahead and, and demo that to you uh, real fast. Remember we said that Python comes with idle. So all you got to do is just type in idle and it comes up. The only thing I've done on this is I've increased the font size. Uh, I don't think I've done anything else to it. If you uh, want to, uh, here is kind of like a simulation of um, the interpreter, but I'm going to go ahead and do a file. So we'll just go new file. And then from here, I can go ahead and, and um, you know, like a, a simple variable name would be like, say for example, name, it's Bob. Okay, we all know that that's, that's gonna work, right? And we just say print name, no big deal, right? So to run this, I'm gonna go and, and save it first. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna go, uh, go call it uh, my demo. It puts PY at the end of it, which is kind of cool. Now I'm gonna run this by pressing F5 and it says, Bot, which is what I expect. It's a little bit awkward how this happens. What I usually do is I'll drag this to the left and dock it, and then I'll get the other one and dock it on the other side. Okay, so he, the book says that you cannot use one of those keywords. You remember what those keywords were? Like false. Let's say for some strange we reason, um, I wanna go ahead and, and assign yes to false, right? And then I wanna print false. 
the variable called false, right? Let's see what happens. It says cannot assign to uh, to false. So I'm getting um, some kind of of, uh, of feedback on here, right? Uh, so let me go ahead and get rid of that offending. What if I change this to a lowercase f? That's not a keyword, right? And then let's go ahead and try that. And it says yes. Okay, so I, because I put, of course, that that makes it a string, right? And I'm so you you can't use keywords. So I, you get an, an um, so you will get an error message. I think that's what he said. You will get an error message if you try to use a keyword. It's he said where you don't get an error message is when you try to use um, one of the built-in functions. Okay, so let's go ahead and try. Why you would want to do this? I don't know. Let's say print. I'm going to go ahead and assign um print and i'm gonna say no and i'm kind of like wanting to use it like a, a as if it was some kind of maybe a boolean or something like that and then i'm gonna say print print which is kind of weird right um but it could have been one of the other functions right and just so happens i'm using that one and i run it and it says i do get an error in this particular case um so that didn't work out there are a variety of other built-in functions like if format float there's a lot of them um here here i i put i just added this to the end of this appendix this was my experience in installing python on windows i just went to the website and i downloaded computer i i went ahead and clicked on download and i just accepted the default now the default ended up putting the 32-bit on here. I know some advanced users want to get the 64-bit. Guess what? It's not going to matter for this class. If you're first starting off, you want to see how it put the, the path on here. Now you could change the path. Many, many advanced users want to, they like to, because they end up with different installations of Python. And then you can go um, into the uh, uh, environment variables, page that I or a window that I showed you and you can move the paths up and down uh, let's say that you were developing for a particular version of Python uh, so it, yeah you'd have to be in advanced setting to be doing that for this class we're just going to go ahead and get Python installed and start working right away I would recommend just accept the default and just make sure you put if you just put these little check marks on here and um, it, you, you should be uh, good to go. It's nice when it says setup was successful, right? And um, I just go ahead and tell you that it comes with IDLE. Uh, it, uh, some people say that IDLE stands for the Integrated Learning Environment. Some people say it, uh, that it's named after Eric IDLE from the Monty Python. I don't know. I probably think the first one is more appropriate. But um, um, now you can use the Python interpreter. So the Python interpreter is when you go and you type in CMD, it gives you this. From here, you type in Python, or you want to find out what version of Python you have. And I've got 3.8.5, right? If I want to enter the interpreter, I would type in Python. And then from here, I can issue my commands, right? All right, so exit. And if you wanted to go ahead and enter a PowerShell, you get the blue screen and you can pretty much do the same thing. Exactly the same, you know, more or less, right? Now, there's a, 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 a PowerShell is in a, a more advanced scripting uh, languages. We're not gonna uh, for our class either one of these would be fine. the The neat thing about these two is that you can use the up arrow to go up and down your previous commands uh, on here. I've noticed that um, you know with um, you know, with PowerShell, you can go ahead and, and I think it's pretty much the same, you know, the up arrows, like for example here, 
oh, I've already exited. So I can't do that on this one. I've exited the, uh, the, you know, the up and arrow keys would be to issue the DOS commands, right? Or the commands that I issued to enter the Python interpreter. Once I'm in the Python interpreter, you know, I can go ahead and use the up arrow keys to reissue uh, previous commands. All right. So uh, a related hyperlink for those of you that are advanced users or want to talk about more of, uh, about installing Python 3.8 on Windows uh, uh, 10. If you click on this little link, you can go ahead and and um, um, see a, a little YouTube video of someone who discusses some of these installation issues in more detail. So uh, that, my friends, is um, you know I know I covered mostly Windows. Like I said, the Mac and Linux have their own little uh, problems. Like I don't want to say you're going to problem, but See, um, Linux already, uh, Linux and the Mac already come with a version of Python in it, but it's like the old one. So that throws some students because uh, they think they've, they've got it and they, they issue some commands and some of the new things don't work because I think like, I'm going off of memory, I think like on the Mac, it's like 2.7, Python 2.7 or something like that. And um, this book, requires, I think it's Python 3.6, because we're using formatting, formatted strings. So you have to go ahead and install Python 3, the latest version, preferably, so that, so that, everything, so that, so that everything you type in from this book will work. Of course, you know, uh, chances are you never know. Things can change. Uh, that's the nature, uh, the nature of technology uh, on here. So when you're on Linux or on uh, a Mac, uh, you're going to be using Python with the number three versus when you're on Windows, you'll be using Python without the number three. And if I'm going off of memory, I believe that if you type in Python by itself on, on, on the Mac, you're going to end up using the 2.7. Uh, you know, so that's not something that you want to be getting mixed up with. But I think a lot of beginners are not going to be doing a whole lot of things at the terminal window on the Mac or the Linux or for that matter, even uh, uh, um, on, on, on the PC, uh, you know, this is a great place to learn a, a, a lot of one-liner commands real fast. But if you want some persistence, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and save your files uh, in, a, um, uh, in a script. So that's why, you know, uh, uh, you might as well just learn idle. It comes with Python. And, uh, you know, some students have told me they don't, they, they're not able to get Sublime or Visual Studio Code to work right. Just start this up, but this is what I recommend you do. Just go to Python, go to options on here, go to uh, configure. But the first thing I do here is is, is off of uh, general. Uh, instead of opening the shell, I'll say open with uh, the uh, edit window. Uh, that's what I would go ahead and, and recommend. And as far as the fonts are concerned, I probably would increase the font size. Notice that I've already got mine set to, to 18. Uh, you may want to look at the other ones, but you know, every time I mess with changing the colors on this, it, I make it look really ugly. So uh, the general ideas here is, is it comes already set to idle classic, that's the white background. You can also use a dark background, which you may, you may like. So go ahead and, and click OK. And then let's exit and come back in. Let's launch, let me launch this so that you can see the new interface. So as you can see, it looks a little a little nicer where I can go ahead and issue my Python commands. And then when I run it with the F5, neat thing about it is when you press run, it'll say, hey, you got to save it. Then you can go ahead and, and save it. And, and it puts in the extension, which Sublime doesn't do, which is kind of cool. And then it runs it. It still does that separate window thing. But remember how I told you to do is just get this, move it to the right and, and uh, or to the left, excuse me, snap it, and then choose the other one. And you should be able, uh, you should be uh, good to go to enter in uh, more commands uh, on here. You should be able to do the whole book with just idle. So um, so I do believe, uh, 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 you know, Sublime is a little bit uh, easier interface. But if you've got, if you could just make those three little changes that I recommend, uh, you should be able to get all your work done. Okay, so that's the end of Appendix A. Uh, installation and troubleshooting issues. 
the big issue, uh, it seemed like, was not putting the check marks on that path thing for Windows people. Uh, and um, the troubleshooting talked about, you know, the fact that you should not uh, uh, use one of the keywords for variable names, and you should not use the function, uh, built-in function names for variable names as well, because they get overwritten. Um, and or and when they get overwritten, they malfunction or they don't work. Uh, you know, he said that you don't get an error message, but I I, I got one, so um, it either changed or I did it wrong. But I'm not going to be doing that anyway. I'm not going to be creating. Uh, I'm aware of the uh, I'm aware of the keywords. You know, they are the pro. That's the we're going to be using these keywords as we continue to learn about the programming language called Python. All of these words here mean something very special to Python, and you cannot use them for variable names. Same things with these function, these built-in function functions. They do very specific things. You know, like length will return the length of a string. You know, print will print out. You know, whatever's inside of a, a, a you know a, a variable, right? So that's pretty much it. I don't have anything else. That's the end of uh, Appendix A. Thank you very much.